Good day viewers, this is Tech Mag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truta and these are the news headlines. Liquid Intelligence sets 60 base stations for LTE. RBZ governor urged to fine-tune foreign currency auction. ZEC demands poll rigging proof. Zapu Treasurer General quits. COVID-19 fifth wave looms. And now in our top story, Zal Zimbabwe, which rebranded last Thursday to Liquid Home, now has 60 new 5G base stations already running as they continuously penetrate the end user market with fast mobile connectivity. In a separate deal, which actually makes them competition to Econet, NetOne, Telecel and Taiwan in GSME connectivity, Liquid Intelligence has been rolling out their 5G network running on fifth generation base stations, which are then backhauled to their fast last mile fiber connectivity. Liquid Intelligence Technology Southern African Regional CEO Wellington Makamure, who said the LTE network is not part of Econet Wireless Zimbabwe and has been running already as they are now expanding it. And now, in our other top story, Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe Governor Dr. John Mangujga has exclusively revealed to TechnoMag that indeed the Dutch foreign currency auction he introduced on the 23rd of June 2020 needs fine tuning so that the RBZ's weekly foreign currency exchange auction continues to enhance its efficiency. Some of the interventions that will soon be made by government are targeted at promoting the use of Zimbabwean dollar. SEC demands coal rigging proof. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission has demanded proof of how it rigs elections, describing as bar talk allegations that it manipulates the results in favor of the ruling ZANU PF party. Addressing political parties attending a youth caucus peace building meeting hosted by 4H Zimbabwe Foundation in Harare yesterday, ZEC spokesperson Jasper Mangwana stated that if people want to say that ZEC has rigged elections, or that something has been done incorrectly, then it will need substantial evidence. He added, if anyone has an issue with the electoral process, then the people should go back and sort it out in parliament because Zach does not make laws. The electoral body has been at the receiving end of salvers over how it has been presiding over the country's elections, as well as producing a flawed voters' role, vote rigging and militarization of its secretariat, among other accusations. Mangwana also said Zach did not control the pre-electoral campaign environment. Mangwana blamed political party youths for causing voter apathy. Meanwhile, ZANU PF youths caused chaos at the event as they tried to stop opposition Citizens Coalition for Change youths from making contributions during the meeting. 4H Zimbabwe Foundation Director John Mucheni urged youths affiliated to different political parties to promote peace and tolerance in the country. During the March 26 by-election campaign period, a CCC supporter, Boneni Nube, was killed in Kwekwe while attending a rally. There was also a violence during the weekend by-elections in Chitungwiza, which resulted in several people being injured. Opposition Zapu has been dealt a heavy blow after its Treasurer General Fuja Kazulu Nsibele resigned from the party just a few months after he was elected to the position. Asibeli was elected the party's treasurer general at the party's election congress held in Bulawayo last October. Sibangi Lizwe Nkomo, the son of the late Vice President Joshua Nkomo, was elected the party's president at the congress. He tendered his resignation from the party in a later dated the 9th of May 2022, but it did not cite his reasons. Sapu spokesperson Kuslengwa Rovu confirmed Masibeli's resignation. The COVID-19 fifth wave looms. The local medical fraternity has warned of a possible fifth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic as new infections increase. Yesterday, the Health and Child Welfare Ministry said it recorded 83 new COVID-19 cases, with 46 of them reported in Matabele Land South at a school in Mangu District. As of May the 7th, there were 25 hospitalized cases and 13 of those cases were vaccinated individuals, while 12 were unvaccinated. Medical and Dental Private Practitioners of Zimbabwe's Association, President Johannes Marisa, said the rise in COVID-19 cases in the country heralded the start of a fifth wave, which has already struck neighboring South Africa. He urged citizens to adhere to all COVID-19 restrictions, including masking up. 
Primary and Secondary Education Ministry spokesperson Taungana Ndoro said teachers and pupils should not be worried about the increasing cases of COVID-19. Ndoro said that most learners aged 12 and upwards were vaccinated against the COVID-19 pandemic. Last week, the World Health Organization reported that Zimbabwe was among a number of African countries at risk of a COVID-19 fifth wave owing to underfunding. Neighboring South Africa declared a fifth wave early this month after a sustained rise in infections over the past 14 days, seemingly driven by the BA4 and BA5 Omicron sub-variants. The variants were first detected in Botswana and South Africa, with the Rainbow Nation having so far recorded the most coronavirus cases and deaths on the entire African continent. And now, in our regional news, 11 Ghanaians are missing as Chinese fishing vessel sinks in El Mina. At least 11 people are missing after a trawler sank off the coast of Ghana on Friday, Ghanaian authorities have said on Monday. The MV Comforter 2, a Ghanaian vessel operated by a Chinese company, sank during a storm about 180 kilometers off Takarodi, Ghana's second largest port. The official said some of the survivors who suffered minor injuries were traumatized. According to the account reported by Mr. Bannerman, they were fishing in a storm when the disaster occurred. The crew was carrying a net that had caught a lot of fish and at the time it was raining heavily. As they tried to take the fish on the boat, the boat turned over, causing the disaster, the Ghanaian Daily Times reported, citing a police source. In Ghana, foreign vessels must register under a local flag and access the country's waters with local licenses. A 2018 survey by the Environmental Justice Foundation, a British environmental and human rights NGO, found 90% of the fishing vessels operating in Ghana are linked to Chinese companies. And now in our international news, in Sri Lanka, protesters have taught leaders' homes in the night of unrest. Angry mobs in Sri Lanka have burned down several homes belonging to rural Rajapashkans and MPs after they were attacked by government supporters. The violence kept a day of unrest that saw PM Mahinda Rajapska quit amid mass protests at his government's handling of economic crisis. It failed to calm protesters who attempted to storm his official residence where he still was inside. Seven people have died and more than 119 have been injured since Monday. An island-wide curfew had been extended to Wednesday morning as authorities seek to quell the violence. Many are still calling for President Kotaba Rajivska, brother of Mahindi, to leave office following weeks of escalating demonstrations over soaring prices and power cuts since last month. On Monday, government supporters clashed violently with protesters in the capital, Colombo, upside Mahinda Rajapska's Temple Trees residence, and then at the main protest site at Gallant's Face Green. Police and riot squads were deployed and tear gas and water cannons were fired at government supporters after they breached police lines and attacked protesters using sticks and poles. Angry demonstrators retaliated, attacking government supporters and targeting ruling party MPs, including one who shot two people after a mob swarmed his car and then killed himself, according to Sri Lankan police. As the night went on, mobs of protesters across the country tore houses belonging to the Rajapska's various ministers and MPs. This included a house turned into a controversial museum by the Rajapska's in the family's ancestral village in Hamburton town in southern Sri Lanka. Footage posted on social media showed homes enveloped in flames as people cheered. This has been TechMag TV News. Thank you for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories. We'll see you next time.